accept their recommendation uh, to forward to council or to reject their recommendation to send everything back to their commission. Um, it's my understanding this matter was um, previously before this committee, it was um, forwarded to the city council for action. They referred it back to this committee for another hearing and this committee is to then make a recommendation to the full city council to either approve the, um, the awarding of the concession agreement to Ready Golf or to disapprove it with the recommendation that it go back to the right. Board of Recreation Park. And the previous, I was the one who referred it back here because we had a change in our committee assignments. Every two years, their committee assignments were changed and I had two new members. Previously on this committee, Ms. Perry was on this committee as well as Ms. Hahn. The uh, committee recommended two to nothing to uh, go forward with the recommendation of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, since there was a change in the uh, makeup of the uh, committee and because there was a lot of interest, I thought it would be prudent to have this special meeting to hear it again and then to make a determination as we move forward from this time. So if I'd like to call the CAO, uh, the Recreation and Parks, uh, and all who would be uh, pertinent to tell us what's before us and what is the recommendation. We will have a public hearing after that. Uh, I and my committee run a one-minute uh, public hearing. If you need more time, you're welcome to have time, but uh, one minute uh, is when we have the clock operating at this time. But we're going to hear from the committee. So who should we hear from first? CAO. Good morning, Veronica Salumbides. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what's before you. Um, it is a concession agreement with Michael Leslie Productions doing business as Ready Golf Centers. The term of the proposed concession agreement is 10 years with one five-year renewal option at the city's discretion. The concession includes the operation and maintenance of electric golf carts at the city's seven 18-hole golf courses. Uh, to select the contractor for the concession, the department released a request for proposal back in April 2007. Um, in accordance with the request for proposal, the department uh, will use six criteria to select the best proposer, and um, the six are, one, ability to finance, operate, and sustain the concession, two, qualifications and experience, three, proposed carts and maintenance replacement plan, Four, vision for concession, including business and marketing plans. Five, financial return to the city in form of rental payments. And lastly, capital improvements. The department received five responses to the RFP. A first level review conducted by the department staff found three out of five proposers to be responsive. Um, a second le level review was then conducted by Economics Research Associates. It's a consultant hired by the department to evaluate the proposals. Um, the consultant found all three responsive proposers to be financially able to provide startup and operational costs as well as capital financing. For the third level review, a five member independent panel was convened to review the proposals and interview the proposers. Now, who was on that five level panel? Um, they are listed in the CAO report. For the record, if you oh, could. Okay, they are listed. Um, in the board report, oops, on page two of the CAO report. Yeah, Robert Conrad from the city of Victorville, Steve Duran from the county of Los Angeles, Recreation and Parks, Parks and Recreation, Michael Henson, leasing manager from uh, Resource and Development Department of Orange County uh, Parks of Orange County County, uh, director of golf for the Rose Bowl. Company of the City of Pasadena, David Sams and Nancy Woods. Sister of Tiger Woods? No, that's not true here. No. <laughs> Nancy Woods, Business Manager, Department of Parks and Recreation City of Santa Barbara. And everybody should kind of relax a little. There's no air conditioning, so I want you all to feel a little uh, good just about being here, number one. Keep on going, Veronica. Uh, the independent panel ranked Ready Golf Center's highest overall, and they receive a score of 97 out of 100 possible points. Um, under the terms of the proposed concession, the Ready Golf will pay the city 39% of gross receipts from the operation of the golf cart concession. They have also committed to invest $100,000 in capital improvements. They will be responsible for utilities re relative to their operation, except for water and trash collection. 90% um, of the rental revenue generated from the agreement will be deposited into the department's operating fund. 
The remaining 10% will be deposited into the golf concessions improvement account. There is no additional impact on the general fund, and the CAO recommends approval. Okay, thank you. From Recreation and Parks? Regina. Regina Adams, Executive Officer for Recreation and Parks, and with me I have Robert Morales, who is the lead in our administrative resources group, who oversees all of our concession agreements. Um, I just wanted to add on to what Veronica just stated in her CAO report. During this process, um, our commission held several open public meetings on this uh, RFP. We have two of our commissioners who comprise, two of the five, our five uh, commissioners who comprise a concession task force. Many, many hearings were held on this whole process um, from beginning to end, and so the public was allowed and had many opportunities to provide input and to make, uh, give their comments to the board. The board even held more than one uh, public meeting itself, the full board, on this particular RFP, and they, and they still forwarded this report to the council, the mayor and the council, for approval. Um, Robert, if you have any technical uh, questions regarding the process, Robert can, uh, can answer those questions. But we just wanted to make sure that everyone understood that this process was very open. Um, the commission did take a lot of time to listen to the comments that were presented to it by the various um, people who came to those meetings. And um, so we followed every rule and we worked very, very closely with Mark Brown, of our city attorney representative, through this whole process. This has uh, been, uh, when did the contract expire? In 2003, and when January was the, 2003, I believe. 2003, and how long was the contract for that contract? It, was it 10 years? 12 years. 12. 12 years, and who had it before? I think... Well, Kishi. Yeah. Kishi even had before yes. the 12 years, too? Mm -hmm. So they had it again, and how long have they had it before? Um, my record since 1975. Since 1975, okay. Very good, okay. okay. So uh, give us some more information. You oversee these assets? Uh, right. right. And how many times since 2003 have we had this, has the commission considered this? It's been out for uh, RFP three times. Three Five times. Years. Right. But this is the first time it's got to council. Correct. Right. You want to give us anything more? Um, I don't do one, sorry. You don't have anything else, but you strongly well, believe in this as a professional and reviewed this and recommend this. You're the one who I, oversees I it. This went through a process that was very transparent, very clear. All the criteria, the rating criteria, the ranking criteria was all up front in the RFP. There were no complaints from any parties, any of the public, any of the city attorney right. on this entire process. Very I good. just wanted to add also, too, for this last time around when we started this RFP process, um, we even um, took this back to our commission because when the first time around, there were, um, there were many of the proposers who didn't meet one of the criteria and so we felt that maybe there was something that we, wasn't quite clear enough and we even scrapped that and went and started the process over and expedited the process to bring this through our board again. Very good. Uh, before we go further, I want to welcome Herb West and give Herb a big hand right there. He's new to the committee there. And uh, he's, he, he just came in. That's all right. You come in and we'll do that. And also he's a golfer, so it helps to have a golfer. Do you golf at all, Ed? Have you ever hit uh, a couple of times? Couple of times uh, yeah, uh, in high school. Let me clarify that, uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman. I impersonate a golfer. Golfer, very good. <laughs> okay, very good. Would department staff for the city attorney's office want to recommend anything before we open up for public comment? Uh, we'll be sure to any questions you have okay. Policy very good. Okay, and the city attorney of Flores, right? Thank you very much for the record. Okay, so uh, uh, Mr. West and Mr. Reyes, in my committees, I run a one-minute clock. If people need more time, I would uh, they give them more time if they need them. So we're going to go first with those who are against the proposal or neutral for the proposal. So I, uh, Jim Dodds, who I'm going to call four names, George Hirano, and you could take the three names, the seats right there, and Pauline Shimura, if that's correct, please. This is against the proposal. <clears throat> Why don't you start, then we'll just go over that way. Okay. Thank you, Pauline. Mr. Levant and members of the committee, I want to thank you for giving me a few minutes to speak with you about the golf cart rental contract with the city. I'm not a political person, and in over the 40 years that my family has run the golf cart rental program for this city, we had only one focus, 
the customers that come in every day renting a golf cart to play on our great city courses. For the past eight years, we've operated with only a month-to-month -month contract and have continued to provide the best service and carts we can, all without knowing whether or not our contract would expire in 30 days. We understand that our carts are getting older, but it's hard to justify buying brand new carts when we didn't know if we'd even have the contract the next month. Years ago, we even proposed buying new carts and having the city pay fair market value for them if our contract was not extended. However, this proposal was not accepted by the city. When the RFP was finally released a few years ago, we felt that we needed to present a few basic items to the city. The amount of rent we paid to the city, our long-standing experience renting carts, and our devotion to customer service. <laughs> we didn't think we need to provide a fancy presentation, multiple pricing options, and higher expensive lobbyists. We spent almost half a century working with the city, donating cards to youth programs, pro providing sand and seed on all cards even when it wasn't required, and even when we've been working on a month-to-month -month contract leasing over 100 new cards, such as we have in the past year. In addition, I wanted to let you know that before this matter was approved by the committee last month, my husband personally called up and asked if we would be on the July 15th agenda. He was informed that Kishi would not be on the agenda, so we didn't know we needed to show up. It's only in hindsight that we learned this was incorrect. Although Kishi wasn't on the agenda, this matter was. Although I feel that our company has more experience and would pay the most rent to the city, as a resident of the city of Los Angeles, I know that the offer currently before you undervalues one of the city's valuable assets and it's just a bad deal that should be reconsidered. Thank you. Just ask you one question. On the 15th, who'd you call it was in the July? Department of Rec and Park. So, do you know they, who they, you I, talked to? I don't know who it was. You don't know. Because no one was there from Kishi at that committee meeting, right. which surprised me. Exactly. But, we didn't. and then no one called and complained until this moment mm -hmm. right now that they weren't notified. So, someone should have made a complaint. I would not have gone forward had not everyone been right. notified. Madam Clerk, do you have any notification requirements on that? I mean, uh, would everybody be notified on that who was? <coughs> there are no public notice requirements other these. than posting the agenda item. And would Recreation and Parks notify uh, them on the 15th of uh, July? Because this is important to know. You speak to the microphone just for the record. Robert Morales, Recreation and Parks. Uh -huh. On that morning, we weren't notified that it was on the agenda, so we were unaware. How do you find that out? I mean, I don't know, because we notify the clerk's office. This was not... When we start the process, yeah. all those proposers that are involved, we notify them what their entire process entails. Right. We do not make any phone calls to tell people when it's going to be in the council or, or anywhere else. We do tell them what the process is at the beginning, and then it's up to everyone. It's incumbent like on them to watch whatever it is. Okay. Right. Pauline, and I thank you. Instruct Melanie Torres to send a fax of the of the the link, so they were able to tell when the. Very well. Come on commission. Thank you, George. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I sent emails to all the council members because I was very very concerned, and um, uh, I'd just like to go sure. over that. Sure. Feel comfortable. That. And and could you give me a take your time? Seconds, take your time. Okay, thank you. I attended the Parks and Recreation meetings, and uh, I've come to the conclusion that the J.H. Kishi Company was not given a level playing field in their efforts to continue as the concessionaires. And these are the following reasons that I wanted to lay out for you. I had an attachment that is sent to the council members, and uh, it showed that Ready Golfers, the Ready Golf group, was not even aware of what catastrophic errors were made in their presentation on insurance issues. And they indicated that the liability claim would be covered by their insurance company. And so I wanted to show you that according to the attachments which they had submitted as part of their bid, uh, <clears throat> that the following coverages were not covered or mentioned. General liability, which defends the insured and the city of Los Angeles, was not covered because of a stipulation that specifically excludes the operation of golf carts. And I know from my experience with this concern that the largest hazard that we've had and the largest claims that we've paid outside of the fires were personal liability claims caused by 
negligent operation of these uh, golf carts. Uh, did, did not, did not, their, their proposal did not show that the LA city buildings that we have on air, all of these uh, facilities were covered for fire insurance. Um, workers' compensation insurance was not in, in, in men, not even mentioned, and loss due to the damages to carts were not were not even indicated here. And when I pointed this out to the Parks and Recreation Subcommittee meeting, uh, I was rebuffed because a city employee, I'm not going to mention who, who he or she was, made this statement. Oh, that can be corrected after the contract is awarded. And it led me to believe that this is already preordained. And this was early in the process. So uh, I, was, I was very concerned about some kind of political shenanigans being involved. And I, I asked the council members, please investigate it from that standpoint. And the third point I want to make is, why would the city of Los Angeles, a department of that city, agree to receive 39% of the gross income when J.H. Kishi Company has been willing to pay 50% of the gross uh, income and have been doing that since the very beginning of time. This would mean a four, approximately, uh, my, my computations are maybe a little bit off, but about, about $4 million difference in the total. And J.H. Kishi Company is willing to invest $200,000 in capital improvements, whereas Ready Golf says, 100,000, and you take a look at their, their, their uh, balance sheet, and you say, well, where's that 100,000 going to even come from? Um, the G.H. Kishi Company presently is already staffed with skilled employees, and Ready Golf got to start to hire new ones, train new ones, and uh, purchase equipment after they are awarded the contract. So you have an ongoing a firm and a brand new firm coming in. All right, we're going to ask you to wrap up. Uh, could you give me 30 seconds then? Sure. Okay. J.H. Kishi is the only Japanese American entity that ever has received a concession from the city of Los Angeles. And they have done a superlative opera, uh, operation in fulfilling the desires of the, of the, of the city. Um, in the past six years, they've worked diligently even without a contract. Uh, <laughs> in spite of that kind of an unstable condition, they have gone out of their way to buy uh, $300,000 worth of new carts, 100 new carts. Uh, I don't know how many people would do that, but this is an indication of their desire to remain as partners with the city of Los Angeles. And I think the city council should take a look back and say, why is the Parks and Recreations taking this stand? And when all the logic seems, J.H. Kishi is the company that would do the best for the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Reyes has a question. Yes. A point of clarification. You're saying that you've already bought 100 new cars? Uh, would, could, could I then? Uh, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Yes. Uh, my understanding was the 100 new carts are now in service right now. And how long ago did you purchase them? Do you know? In the last two years. Eight months ago. Give me, give me eight, eight months ago? Last year. Yeah. Eight months ago. Okay, thank you. And it, was it a purchase or a lease, a rental? Could be one or the other. Yeah. But you're not with the company. I'm not with the company. But somebody no. for the company is probably in this car saying, so when they come up, if company representatives come up, please address those. George, thank you very much for your thank comments. You I appreciate that. Mr. Dobbs? Dobbs, yeah. My name is Jim Dodds. I'm a former city employee, retired last year after 35 years. My last position with the city was I was a golf supervisor, course manager at the Encino Balboa Complex. Prior to that, I had the same uh, situation and same uh, position at Hanson Dam and Woodley Golf. Now, I'm very familiar with the concessions concerns. I've worked with many, many concessionaires over the 30-some years. Now, Wayne Shim is who called me a couple of weeks ago and asked me if I would like to say a couple of words uh, about my relationship with the company. I go back with Joe Kishi 
who had the company back and started in 75. So I know the whole family, and, and we've always had a wonderful working relationship. Now, over these years that I've been with the city and knowing the cart concession people, I don't think I can remember one person that came into my office or knocked on my door or called me and complained about the service or the personnel at Casey Company. Let me repeat that. That's a true story. Nobody has ever come in and called me or knocked on my door and complained about service or the personnel. This is important. We're selling public relations at the golf course, a good time and public relations. Kishi over the years with me would let my marshals, my starters, use the carts when our carts break down. They did this regularly. They would help with TV shoots, movie shoots, uh, shotgun tournaments, you name it. We worked together on everything. In fact, uh, how about the police celebrity tournament over the years? I helped them when they had it at Woodley Lakes many years ago. And they had to go out and get extra carts for the VIPs for that tournament. They do that, they've done it every year for a number of years. And I guess the 4th of July, it's the past 4th of July, uh, and um, Mr. Alicon's district, they loaned carts out for the festival they had at Hanson Dam on the 4th of July. Very good. Mr. Dobbs, you want to wrap up? Well, it's pretty quick. But I'd like to tell you about 92, 95, 90. We well, are already into two minutes, so I had to give you a minute. So if you want to wrap up, I appreciate it. Okay. All I can say is in 92, 95, and 97, we had massive floods out there in the basin. Massive floods. We had to cut down on the Encino course just for nine holes. We were closed for Encino from February to October 26, eight and a half, nine months. We lost pretty close to $900,000 in revenue. You know what Kishi did? He kept his employees on the payroll. Now, how many people month to month would do that? Very, very few in the city. Los Are Kishi employees under the livable wage contract with the city of Los Angeles now? Uh, no, not now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Okay. Thank you. Now we're going to call Eddie Ferraro. Is that correct, Eddie? Okay. Mike Brown. God, Eddie, help me there, man. Glenn Kaziba. Excuse me, Glenn. Call me Tom Labongi. <laughs> you want to just go across it? We'll try to keep it one minute so everybody gets a chance to speak, but if you need a little more, please do. Yes. Hi, my name's Eddie Fierro. Um, I'm 44 years old. I've worked at the Montebello Country Club for 31 of those 44 years. I started off cleaning the locker room, worked the cart room, worked the driving range. And now I'm the head golf professional there, so I have worked every aspect of the golf facility. And along with that, um, working and, and running a cart room takes more than just plugging them into the wall, taking the money for the cart, sending them out. There's a, a lot of maintenance that's required. At our facility alone, we have over 100 carts, and just for maintenance alone, it's over $3,000 a year, I mean a month which comes over $35,000 a year. Um, I couldn't fathom that time seven golf courses trying to, and that's not even just uh, employing a mechanic to fix the carts. So it's, it's a big business. It's a tough business. It's not easy. I have seen every aspect in every part of the business, and, and it's hard. And with the recession going on, we've, we've lost at least 25% of our clientele. And the people that we do have, a lot of them are walking because that's just more money out of pocket. So it's really hard to make a big business out of the carts alone. So when you have someone offering you 50% versus 39% or whatever they're offering, I would take the 50% and run. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. I just have to say this. I, I know this man. I've never seen him, though, with long pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Usually he has on shorts and, and a polo shirt. Anyway, you clean up well. Thank you. But I want to know, has he seen you with long pants on before? That's the thing. I always golf in shorts, regardless okay, of the okay. weather. Okay, good job. Thank you very much. Thank the city of Montebello. Glenn. Hand on? Sure. What I did is I took... it to one page to, to try to understand better. Uh, my name is Glenn Kazahaya. I have over 20 years experience as a chief financial officer with major healthcare institutions and 10 years experience as a turnaround consultant. 
I've been honored and recognized for providing exceptionally valuable consulting services by one of the most notable financial gurus in the world. Although cart rental is not my specialty, numbers are numbers. As a financial specialist, my goal is to focus on the issues that have the greatest financial and or operational impact, challenge all of the numbers and assumptions, and weed out the irrelevant data, and prepare recommendations based on the most meaningful data. When I read the general manager's report, I was very impressed by their due diligence and what seemed to be a very thorough process utilized in analyzing the golf carts. However, after a closer review of the, the report and an analysis of how the final rank and scoring, the point systems was allocated, it was clear that the criteria and point uh, scoring methodology that was used to come up with the final decision was flawed. So if you go to row six, uh, on, on that document that I just shared with you. Row six shows what the actual revenues were in three point, uh, in 2006. So everyone's already said it, I won't re, uh, reiterate it, but basically 39% versus 50% on revenues in 2006 of $3.4 million. That's 376000 If you take it now to the current period, that's uh, $400,000 a year. Average it out over 10 years, over $4 million. The most two important rows are going to row 13. If you go to thir row 13, column C, you see 68 points, and that's for Ready Golf, and Kishi had 75 points. See that? And the total score that uh, Ready got was 485. They came in the first with 485 on row 20, and Kishi had 440 points. So what's the difference? For $4 million more, over 10 years, Kishi got seven points more. If you take seven points and divide it by 485, that means that it was weighted 1.4% of the total votes was for $4 million more. Uh, the second issue, for experience. They got one more point, 95 out of 96, out of 485. That's one point, that's less than two one thousandths of a point. So you add those up together, they got eight points more, which counted for 2% of the total points for having, basically it says, your experience is worth nothing. $4 million is Thank worth 2%. Thank you very much. Uh, Staff, uh, if you could, Kathy, hand that to the department. I want you to analyze this when you call back up after the public comment. Thank you very much for your comments. Can I have 30 seconds more? Sure. If the RFP point process, it was critically flawed, and that demonstrates it. If it addressed the three city objectives, it maximizes revenue, Kishi pays $4 million more, you have an experienced operator, 40 years more experienced than ready, and risk management, no lawsuits. If they used a more rational point methodology, then Kishi should have been awarded the golf. Thank you very much, Glenn. Good morning, Mr. LeBon. Yes. My name is Michael Brown. I run a youth organization in the San Fernando Valley. It's Southern California Junior Golf. And I'm also a golf professional. And I've been in the business for about 30 years. Um, the Kishi Golf Cart Company has been very instrumental in all of our youth programs throughout the city of Los Angeles for such a long time. Uh, the day-to-day -day golf operations that uh, it takes to run a golf course is just a lot more than just pro shop, green fees, um, and maintenance. The Kishi Golf Cart Company employees are sometimes at the golf course earlier in the morning than some of the city employees. The, I've also had experience with both of them, uh, Ready Golf as well as Kishi. Um, <clears throat> I had to operation, my operation had to leave Encino Balboa Golf Course about seven years ago uh, when Ready Golf came aboard. Uh, some of the programs that were already implemented before Ready Golf uh, got to Encino Balboa are no longer there. Um, I think that at this time, uh, Kishi Golf Cart Company plays a major factor and is so much more superior in running the day-to-day -day operations with the golf cart industry uh, in the city of Los Angeles over the past 20, 25 years. I'm not as sure exactly how long they've had the contract, but taking an experienced golf operator versus a non-experienced golf operator is really a no-brainer. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Just for the record, I have a Mike Brown. That's me, sir. Uh, of Woodley Golf That's Course. Yeah. And then I have a Michael Brown of West Hills. That's me. Both of those are me. All right, but you're in West Hills, and you're in. No, no, that's my address. I know. I'm, I'm not. Sure. Too somebody, close. somebody it's filled okay. out the speakers. That's okay. Form that's all right. Me. Thank you. You want to play there? Thank you very much. Now I'd like to call on Abe to to Zubu, Zubu boy. Right. Thank you, Abe, Bruce, Dennison, and Doug, Ahara. Thank you. Hello, my name is Abe Suboy. I'm kind of representing part of the community. Um, some of my background is that uh, I ran the Go for Broke uh, Education Foundation uh, golf tournament for about three years, and mm -hmm. it's still ongoing, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with that organization. Some of the vets are here. I just wanted to say that uh, through their financial support, moral support with, all, with the golf committee and, you know, and donating money, help promoting this tournament, we were able to raise money for the Gopher Broke Education Foundation. And, uh, you know, they continue to do this, and I hope they can get this concession so they continue with the, you know, the relationship that we have. Right. They, say they, they can't get this concession, just to let you know, it's either accept the recommendation of the department or rejection. I understand. Totally. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Bruce Dennison, and uh, everyone here has been quite positive about Kishi, and I incorporate all of their responses and comments. I'm here as a retired defense attorney who, have rep who has represented public municipalities and insurance companies for many years. And when the issue of choosing and entrusting a contract of this size to a company that has no experience and no qualifications is presented to me, I have to ask you why you would want to sit next to that entity as your co-defendant in a personal injury action that will inevitably follow. Someone is going to be injured on one of these golf courses involving one of these golf carts. And the city of Los Angeles will be the named defendant and the second named defendant will be Michael Leslie Productions, Inc. And that person and that company will be sitting there and there will be a plaintiff's attorney who will be investigating the background of Michael Leslie Productions, Inc. I don't believe that the city has vetted your particular candidates very well. And I think, and I urge you to do so, because as you sit there in that courtroom with a jury, as a plaintiff's lawyer is attacking your co-defendant, it's going to reflect upon the city of Los Angeles. How much do you know about Michael Leslie Productions, Inc., a corporation that's been in existence since the mid-'80s? But as a production company, what else did they produce? What other businesses are they involved in? Is there anything that might be embarrassing to the city? And more importantly, in fact, most importantly, what qualifications have they had as a production company to run a large golf operation of the type we're discussing here? Thank How you. How this ever reached council, I do not know. I'm here to answer any question. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good morning. Um, my name's Doug Ihara. I'm here to, I'm the president, uh, current president of the Southern California Nikkei Golf Association. Um, just last year we celebrated its 50th year. And uh, no small part to the, to the dreams and efforts of uh, Joe Kishi, as uh, he was one of the founding members of our organization and uh, uh, was very helpful in bringing golf to a, uh, then, back then, a very uh, discriminatory uh, situation. Uh, I bring this up today because uh, nowhere is there given any kind of consideration uh, for for the, his that kind of volunteerism in our community. Uh, you see the six things that they were that the the requirements that each of these proposals uh, RFPs had to show, but nothing is in there that kind of looks at that 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 fact. And that's one of the things I wanted to make sure the committee understands is that. Uh, many of us in, a, in this community don't look at G Joe Kishi as just a company, but really as a slice of the Japanese American history. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's just been a model minority owner for the last 40 years. Uh, they've, as, as many people have shown, uh, they, they are involved uh, deeply in the committee, uh, community. And I think, uh, I, I just hope that, uh, that the city does something right and awards uh, 
uh, makes a, a better decision uh, for the city of Los Angeles and its golfers. Thank you, Doug, for your Thank comments. You. Next, uh, Jason Elias, Ted Winship, Andy Camacho. Good morning. Good morning, council members. I'm here representing uh, Service Employees International Union, which represents about 10,000 city workers, among them uh, folks who maintain the golf courses. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks in the room. We got nothing against Kishi. We got nothing against um, uh, Burnback or uh, Ready, Mike, golf. Ready Golf, as, as their name is here. Um, however, we're here to try to represent the public interest. We've given back just about 300000 or we hope to, <laughs> uh, if our deal goes forward with the early retirement. Uh, city employees um, are willing to sacrifice their raises um, to keep the city solvent. What we're asking the council to do today is to reject this contract because we believe that the city can make a million dollars more over the, uh, every year for the next 10 years um, if they reject the contract and self-operate. There's three reasons why we're asking you to reject this, and I'll make it very brief. Number one, a 10-year contract is much too long given the economic situation that we're in, the economic crisis. Uh, if there's even an inkling that we can make more money uh, by self-operation, why do a 10-year contract? Number two, the 1022, um, Charter Section 1022, and also the contracting procedures were not followed in that city self-operation was only considered after the RFP was let and, and a recommendation from Recreation and Parks um, to, to give the contract to Ready Golf. Then the city's self-operation was compared to, um, to Ready Golf. Instead of what happened in 2004, and actually in 2004, Recreation and Parks staff recommended self-operation before an RFP was ever let. So we think that the process was flawed with the 1022 and also was a violation of our contract. And then number three, self-operation works. We're already doing self-operation at Harbor Golf Course, now given it's a nine-hole golf course, but the net operating income, and this was given to me uh, by the department, to th I believe 2006, 2007, net operating income for 30 golf carts at Harbor Golf Course was $140,000 a year. Okay. All right. So we're asking to reject it. We're asking um, that you make a stronger recommendation back to Rec and Parks to immediately begin self-operation. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. much for your comments. Ted? Thank you for the opportunity of uh, addressing this body. Uh, I uh, concur with Jason. Uh, I do believe that the uh, city of Los Angeles should be operating the carts. The figures that they have presented were flawed. Uh, it's, it's just inconceivable that a person or an entity that has no experience in golf uh, cart operation is given this contract and has been uh, offered 11% uh, less of the operating expenses. Now, we all agree on one thing. The city does need carts. I know for a fact that we can produce 500 carts, brand new carts, on a lease, a three-year lease, and that the lessor will provide liability insurance coverage in that contract. And there's no reason that the city should not at least give the uh, you denigrate the ability of the of your employees when you say that they can't handle this operation one last thing one last thing i was going to give you a free round of golf you finished it <laughs> <laughs> you know i rehearsed and i could not fit this in one minute no matter okay, what i okay, said okay. I, I can't get my name out in one minute uh, <clears throat> but the city uh they have the th thing called the cap rate. I don't know if anyone is knowledgeable about that. It was shown as a $497,000 charge against the city operating operation of the carts. However, those monies go to the city of Los Angeles. They don't all go to recreation and parks, but they go to the city of Los Angeles. 
and it, but it was shown as an expense. The expense for rental of the carts was $75,000 more for the city to, to rent these carts than, than the, the winning bidder. And last of all, one last thing. <clears throat> if citizenship counts, this contract should be turned down. Thank you very much. Mr. Camacho. Good morning. Um, I am, first of all, not a golfer, even though my cousin is Tommy Camacho from Montebello Golf Court. So he tried, but nevertheless, to no avail. But anyway, I'm here to speak to you about what I feel could be, if approved, a radio mistake for the city of L.A. As a stakeholder in the city, I felt the need to express my disapproval today. Uh, as a businessman here in, in Los Angeles, and I'm in the food and beverage business, I have nothing to do with uh, golf. I have several concessions and uh, restaurants here, not only in the city of L.A., but other surrounding cities. And I just want to see the city get the best deal from an economic perspe perspective. And, uh, you know, I would agree to a, uh, and I hate to see the city agree to a contract with the city contract that would provide the city with fewer dollars in the future that they currently receive from a vendor. It just doesn't make any financial sense. I've looked over the general manager's report and in simple black and white terms states that uh, Ready Golf only is proposing 39 percent as already has been discussed as opposed to 47 that the city currently receives and the 50 cents 50 percent that the other bidder approved. Any successful business person uh, to receive less money for the same object when someone is willing to pay you more. The numbers are very simple, 39% as opposed to 50%. That's not prudent. And as a company, and I have responded to many, many uh, RFPs, uh, again, over the last 25 years, again, not only here in the city, but other cities. And I can tell you that I've reviewed this RFP, and I've never seen one where the emphasis is so misplaced. The emphasis of this RFP, like any concession RFP, should simply be what will bring the city the most funds, followed by whether or not the company has experience to do the job. Rent should be the most heavily weighted criteria. Why anyone would write an RFP that gives more points for a business plan than for revenue just doesn't make any sense to me. And the RP is flawed in many other areas. First rent is given only 15 points, fewer points than the business plan. The cater does not affect the bottom line of the city. In addition, I do not understand why the city would make ability to finance, quote unquote, a prerequisite as should be for a concessionaire to guarantee the stability of the company, also worth 15 points. Finally, why is the business plan worth more points than anything except, except experience. I know that it's not the business plan that carries the day or even in the end truly matters. Instead, it's the rent. It's the rent. The experience in the actual amount given for things like capital improvements that matters. In this RP, it appears that the opposite were true. And these are the flaws that I found. Thank you very much, Mr. Camacho. And you have a lot of experience. I appreciate those comments. Mike Yamaki is our last card of those against the proposal. Thank you. I'm not going to go over uh, just to highlight some, some issues to clarify for some of your questions. I'm assuming that you all received a letter from Councilman Parks on the, on the finance. Uh, <clears throat> when my I aunt everybody did, did you get the letter from Mr. Parks? We got the letter. You got the letter. Okay, good. Thank you. I found it riveting. Riveting. Riveting, Mr. G. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to just explain two things. Now, let me clarify some of the misstatements that are there or the differences in, in, in statement, and then I'm going to say why this is a bad deal for the city. First of all, let me clear up some issues. Uh, Mr. Dodds came in and probably in the 70s, but Joe Kishi and my aunt, uh, Margaret Chimu, they started this business, I think, in 1969. Just so this, for the record, you said your aunt, so you have a family relationship here. You're here as a I'm family member. I'm not here as a lawyer. I'm not You're here, here as a family member. Yes, exactly. Okay. So this is in 1969 that uh, this company started. There's another uh, indication that 
this has been out of contract since 203 uh, this morning. That's actually incorrect. The contract, uh, we've been out of contract since 1991. The contract ended in actually 1991. There are various elements and everything that happened. So this has been on a thing since 1981. Uh, recently. Um, 1991. 1991, correct. Uh, recently, the uh, company has put all their employees on living wage. So we've corrected that issue too. Immediately they've done that. Um, but the crux of the issue here, and there, there's been some, uh, the last hearing, there was a statement saying that the Kishi company actually did not provide within the transcript uh, any more money back to the city when the question was asked by Janice Hahn, which is incorrect. Kishi company is offered 50% to 39, so we know what that is. For two decades, 18 years, this contract has been worth 47% to the city, 47%. There's no reason in this time or any other time to take less. We don't need to sell this asset so cheap at 39%. By the RFP and by those numbers, they're not our numbers. I heard someone say these aren't our numbers. But the numbers right there at 4.4 million more to the city are the numbers that were done in the RFP. So any of you that drove by any golf course this morning, whether it's Rancho, whether it's uh, Sepulveda, if you saw a golf cart, you could put in your head, ka-ching, 11% less. So at 6 a.m. when that cart went out, that's 11% if you, it's a, all the way down the line. Now, what this means in terms of money, let's talk about in terms of money. At 39%, you, Ready Golf, would have to do 10 million more gross to come up to the four. Because if you take three, 10 million, it's 3.9, they would have to do 10 million more in gross. That would come out to be over 4,000 something carts a month, more than what's going on. There's not enough time in the day. There's probably going to be maybe seven, eight hours of daylight coming toward the winter time. You can't rent that many carts. Now, traditionally, the Kishi Company on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday rents out 100% by, by 10 a.m., which means there's very little left. Um, People here in this in this city, they're either walkers or they're riders. You can have a Rolls Royce out there. You might try it once, but that's it. They're either walkers or riders. Now, I'd just like to do a couple of things. What kind of partners are anyone, the Kishi Company? In 79, they gave 7500 uh, 7, to protect the golfers at Sepulveda. In 1982, they gave 10000 to do the indoor partitions. In 1983, they donated at 15000 25 golf carts to the to the city of LA. In 1984, they constructed a permanent addition to the Sepulveda building at 30,000. 1986, 35,000 toward construction for the new wing at Hanson Dam. 1987, $2,000 for re-roofing the Hanson Dam guard. 1988, they donated 75,000 toward the construction of the new Griffith Park building. In 1989, they donated 24,000 for the new wiring in the Griffith Park building. 1989, they donated to the Rexham Parks. In 1996, 25,000. In 2000, they did all and installed all the sand and seed for all the golf carts. Um, so this is the kind of partner that they're going to be. Financial ability, Mr. Dodd said they took their hits. They didn't do anything else. This is a bad deal for the, for the city. They worked well. i got to say, well, we've always worked well with the Rex and Park staff. Mr. Muckery uh, has always worked hard with us and diligently. I don't think anyone's ever said anything bad about the Kishi Company. Now, today, we need new carts. In 2005, and this is my last point, in 2005, and I shared this with Mr. Muckery because some of the people don't remember, in 2005, we've been out of contract since 1991, we went to them with John and said, look, we need to get new carts. We picked club car because at that time when the city was thinking about self-serving, they wanted club car. So we picked club car. We said, we'll buy club cars at 4,000 each. If you decide to take it over and not give it to us, we will sell it back at market value at $2,800, and we made a deal. But through all the different processes, that, never, that deal never came to fruition. Came to fruition so we've been on a month to month. Sir. Okay. Thank you very much for your comments. That concludes those who are against the proposal. Now for the proposal, Brian Kreps, Donna Lamb, Mark Card, Carge? Cargi. Cargi. Okay, here we go. And uh, then we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is uh, Brian Kreps. I'm the current director of golf at Ready Golf Centers. 
I've been a PGA member for 21 years. And prior to uh, joining Michael's team at Ready Golf Centers, I was the uh, director of golf at one of the most highly decorated resorts in the country, Camelback Golf Club. And a big portion of that responsibility was managing a fleet of golf cars of 160 golf cars. And, you know, we've, we've heard a lot about, you know, the lack of experience. We have plenty of firepower on our team, plenty of experience dealing with golf cars. But the real issue is the current state of the golf, cor golf cars in the, the city of Los Angeles. It's deplorable. And we're ready to come in and, and service a new fleet. Thank you for your comments, Brian. Donna? I'm Donna Lamb. I'm, um, I've been a golfer in the city for more than 20 years. And um, I beg to differ with Mr. Dobbs, but whenever my girlfriends and I go out there and we complain about the horrible golf carts, we've always told just call the city. So he might not have heard of our complaints. Um, and really, all I want to say is that they're terrible. We really want to get them now, new golf carts. This has gone on way too long, and we're just really unhappy with the way it's been. Thank you, Donna. Mark. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for uh, hearing us. Um, my name is Mark Cargi. I am the head golf professional at Ready Golf Centers at the Sepulveda Golf Complex. Uh, I have been in the golf business for 29 years, last 15 years as a PGA member. Uh, I have run golf cart fleets. I was the head golf pro at the Los Canyons Golf Club in Simi Valley for five years where we had a fleet of 162 carts plus four beverage carts. So we do have experience with, with carts uh, as opposed to what we've heard a little bit here today. Um, we do need new carts. They're dangerous, and they do need to be replaced, and that's why we wanted to take over, have good carts for safety. Thank you very much. I'm going to call another set of speakers now, but uh, Madam Clerk, this is Mr. Parks' letter. Will you make sure the department gets a copy of that? They can review it. I can just pass that when we come back and ask questions. Next, I'm going to call Gary Shepard, Doug Lamb, and Bill Tooley. Bill Tatum, forgive me, Bill. Anybody that big, you get. I do crap. forgive. I know. And a strong side linebacker coming in close. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. My name is Gary Shepard. I've been an instructor for two years now, and in the golf business for eight years, where I've been at country clubs and uh, familiar with running carts. And they are in terrible condition. They're far too old now, and they need to repl be replaced now. Thank you very much, Gary. David Lamb speaking. My children use these golf courses, and the issue of safety truly concerns me. I'm also really concerned upon hearing these proceedings that this decision not be delayed and that we not put this uh, issue in, in limbo. We should move forward, make sure that we do have a wonderful facility for all the people that use it, including my children. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Bill Tatum. Uh, my card got right. Up. I'm for Kishi. You're for Kishi. All right. It's okay. It's a public comment, so you can say that. You got a minute. All right. Thank you. Um, all I want to say is that I'm a member of the Los Angeles Police Department and want to thank Kishi for all they've done for the department as far as the uh, Memorial Golf Tournament is you know, concerned. Um, I know it, it takes time putting this together. Um, I just want to come and say, hey, we appreciate what they've done for us, the family members, as well as the officers, and uh, they do an excellent job every year. They put Where you work? I work valley traffic. Valley traffic. How many tickets you write last week? Uh, I book, I book <laughs> drunk drivers. I don't write tickets. Very good. Good job there, officer. Thank you very much. Lori Pate, Craig Kessler, and Jerry Newman. Hi, Hi, Lori. My name is Lori Pate. I'm the secretary to MLP Productions. I just wanted to come here today to let you know that I've been involved with um, the whole process from start to finish. This RFP was done um, in accordance with your recreation and parks um, criteria. We are ready to take over to proceed with this. I encourage you to approve this and let it go forward as your um, city p City employees have done a diligent job in doing their due diligence and bring it before you and recommend it. And there has been no flaws in this process, and I encourage you to proceed. Thank you very much, Lori. Craig Kessler. 
Good morning. Mr. LaBonge, members of the committee, Craig Kessler, Executive Director of Public Links Golf Association of Southern California. I submitted a hard copy of a letter we transmitted to you electronically late last week. It goes into great detail why our organization believes that the process in this particular circumstance, the one that resulted in the recommendation that's before you today, was pretty much pristine, was very much by the book, and it was as open, perhaps even more open, than, uh, than Regina Adams of the Department of Recreation and Parks discussed. Our perspective is not the perspective of the two operators here in the room or even the union that's in the room here today. We don't have a dollar at stake. We do, if you read the Los Angeles Times on Sunday, have a powerful passion about seeing a situation that's languished for way too many years get rectified finally with some stability. And as Councilmember LaBonge pointed out to one of the other speakers, what you have in front of you are not a court of original jurisdiction. This is not before you. You can't select anyone. You can approve this process or you can throw it out yet again for a fourth time. Let our perspective is a little bit different. If I could have just a little more time, thank you. In that, it is the process that matters to us. This city, this Department of Recreation and Parks has had nothing but difficulty getting stability into its golf system because it's had difficulty with an RFP process. The truth is that this process was advertised publicly. It was debated at a golf advisory committee. It was debated at various commission meetings. It was debated twice after the award was made. And now we're hearing it being challenged yet again. I wish, it'd be, I wish some of the parties that were challenging it here today had been in the rooms where I was in the room where we did have substantial input into this. There are reasons, there are solid reasons. This is not a bid situation. This is a request for proposals for what amounts to really personal services. I think Mr. Wesson has some experience with another government that sometimes when you focus a little too much on that top number, uh, I don't know, people with the last name of Duffin or O sometimes end up with lease agreements, much to the uh, pain of the public and much to the pain of the government that tries to oversee them. I've not, because it's not my role, vetted the work of the panel that was independent. I do know a couple of the, mem couple of the panel members, and I've not discussed it with them, but I have great respect with, for them. And I've actually served with both of them on panels in, in other places, and I know that they understand. I don't know what went on in that room. I'm not sure exactly what's in those RFPs. But I will say, how many bites of the apple does everyone get in this particular process? There is more at stake. Literally every contract in the golf system, driving ranges, restaurants, are right now on month-to-month -month agreements. If this council throws this out on the basis that's before you today and asks you to act as a court of original jurisdiction instead of appellate jurisdiction, what you will have done is provide a very road map to every incumbent operator and every spurn proposer out there to challenge you. You will have shown them exactly how it needs to be done. That's our perspective and that's our passion. I like Wayne Shimizu, I like Mike Burnback, I like Jason Elias, he's a good friend of mine. That's not the issue for us. The issue for us is, is validation of a process that was solid so the Department of Recreation and Parks can move forward with that process and get some stability into a golf system. That department desperately needs the revenue therefrom, and the public is, deserves more than those carts you heard described in the Los Angeles Times on, on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kessler. Mr. Newman. Uh, good morning, Council Members. My name is Jerry Newman, representing Ready Golf. I was going to speak a little bit about process, but I think uh, what you just heard encapsulates the reality of where the process is. This has been an incredibly transparent process. It has been vetted more than three times, and in each instance, unanimously, everybody that has reviewed this RFP has decided that Ready Golf is the appropriate group to run the city's golf concession. Um, I think it's more than that, though, and I think the reasons are, have to be noted and be, have to remain apparent. One. Ready Golf has a better business plan. It has, in many ways, created more revenue for the city in its proposal, or shown to be more revenue in the city in its proposal than any other concessionaire that had bid. Let me explain that. Ready Golf bid a number of different options. The department, in trying to create transparency, created a level playing field and created a base case. The reality is the base case for the other two proposers was their best case. The best case was Ready Golf was a 61% revenue share with the city. That means the city was able to get and is still able to get 61% of the revenue from the golf concession. Now in my book, as much as 39 is less than 50, 61 is more than 50. And that is something that you have available to yourselves. The other reason business plan is important 
business plan is important because it is the business plan that does drive revenue into this system. It is not just the numbers. It is not just 39 versus 50. I appreciate the job the Kishi Company has done for 40 years that they have had this concession. In 40 years, their ridership amongst golf carts has been at its highest 25%. Mr. Newman, let me interrupt you for a second there. Hold the speaker's time for a second. Um, you throw out the figure 61%. Can you clarify what that means? Uh, when you talk about concession, I mean, just be a little bit more elaborate as to what that 61% means. Uh, certainly, we can't remember race. Um, in Ready Golf's proposal, uh, they bid a series of different options for the city, which changed the amount of the rent split that the city was able to get. The base, the lowest, was 34%, and that is if the city wanted Ready Golf to do a number of additional capital improvements that amounted to approximately half a million dollars of additional capital improvements. In order to put those capital improvements up front, the uh, half a million dollars, they would have to, they'd ask the city to take less rent, 34%. On the other side of it, at the top end, was 61% in the options. That 61% said if the city were to allow us, Ready Golf, as the only proposer who bid to put in GPS systems on the golf carts, not charged to every golfer. If a golfer didn't want to use GPS, they didn't have to. But if they allowed us to do it and they allowed us to charge a $5 rate for the use of that GPS on a pay per play, I know that word's horrible, but that's in, in golf terms, that's the reality of the word. If, on a, if, if a golfer comes in and they said, I want to activate the GPS on my cart, and I'll pay you $5 to do that, if the city accepted that bid, Ready Golf was prepared and has bid, and it is in their current bid to share 61% of the revenue with the city of Los Angeles. 61% of the $5? No, no, no 61% of the, of the golf cart rental. For that whole thing? For that whole thing. Comparing the 50%, the same number that the 50% is, 61% instead of 39. It is an option available to the city. Thank you. Is that okay. clear? Clear. Continue and wrap up, please. <laughs> I, the, the reason business plan is important is because in the 40 years that the Kishi Company has had this, the highest amount of ridership, as we understand it, is 24%. In their bid package, they said 24% is their ridership. That means only 24% of the people who come to all golf courses in Los Angeles ride in carts as compared to the county, which is at 34%. That 10%, while maybe not seeming to be a huge difference, amounts to a million three a year in revenue. That million three a year in revenue is what, because of a bad business plan, is not being realized by the city of Los Angeles. Now, what we are suggesting is that by having a good business plan, by operating right, by having new cars, by having a means of getting things done in a way that, is, that has great efficacy for the golfers, results in a higher revenue share, to the, higher revenue income to the city. Uh, thank uh, you. If you could just wrap up. I wrap up. I, you talk about good, I, I heard a lot about good partnership. If I, my numbers are correct, Kishi Company over 40 years in living off the concession of this city has provided approximately $330,000 in, in income back to the city, of which I think $120,000, if I add it up right, it was running pretty fast, was for their own facilities or benefited their own facilities. Ready Golf, in the 10 years that it has run on a month-to-month -month basis, has not only invested, which they said is so difficult to do on a month-to-month -month basis, nearly $200,000 into the city's facilities, but has given back to the city in terms of donations to youth golf, in terms of community output, over $180,000. Who's a better partner? We believe that we are. We believe that we are doing the right thing by the city. We believe we've had the best proposal. We believe we have the best business plan, and we believe we have the means to do the best for the city of Los Angeles. And it's not important that we believe it. Every commissioner has believed it. Every person who has been a consultant to you has believed it. Every task force member has believed it. Thank we you. We have been unanimously approved, and we hope that you will do so as thank well. You all for, thank everyone for their public comments. I'd like to ask that the uh, department staff return to the Tables for question from the committee. And uh, can we get John? John, they want John Muckrey. Because I have a couple of mm -hmm. questions.
quick. Uh... And I want the CAO up here, too, because the CAO is very important. I have a couple of uh, quick uh, questions that I'd like to, to uh, ask. Explain, I don't understand why we have this month-to-month -month problem. John Mercury everywhere apparently. John Mercury, general manager, Department of Recreation and Parks. When I took over the department a little over five years ago, virtually every single contract we had was on a month to month. It's just I I personally believe it's just too hard for previous general managers to put a request for proposal through the system and get a contract in place. We Why put, is that? I be, believe be candid. I believe some of it rests with the department. We, we did not have a real, I have 35 years in contract experience. I have two masters. I did contracting in the federal government, and I was a city's purchasing agent at General Services. So I, I do know contracting, both bid process and RFPs. So I put a lot of effort in an area that it was just easier for my predecessors just to go month to month. I'll be honest with you. It's a difficult process. You have to reach out to communities. The city requires you to cast a wide neck. The city uh, desperately wants new vendors to come into the city family to do business, and they want them to compete on a level footing. Now, John, I know that, uh, th th you know, we're the city, not the county. I don't think any of the county golf courses are on a month-to-month -month contract. In fact, I don't think they've they've ever been so how come they can do it we have difficulty in not doing it and also coupled in that and I did ask this of uh, uh, Mr. Ward some time ago how come we don't and I'm not suggesting we do it but at the county they have one contract for everything that's, that's why is the, the way that we do things why do we believe that that is a better way to do things? council member you're correct the the most if you look at most uh, municipal governments who have golf courses they count they contract out the operation it's still a core function of recreation but it's not a core function of the municipal government to provide the staff to staff these golf courses so in the face of the county and others, they use American Golf. And American Golf then has the contract to provide everything. The second you go in, it's American Golf. When you get done with the, your playing, it's American Golf. So you have one contract for all the surfaces. We have a hybrid. We have a hybrid service in that we have pro shops run by independent contractors. We, the city of L.A., run the golf course operations. We collect the fees. We maintain it. And then uh, our golf carts, with the exception of one uh, of our golf courses, is done through a contract. And currently, the Kishi Corporation has it on the month-to-month. The -month. I don't know what the future holds for the city of L.A. I, I'll be honest with you. As we face these budget crises, as we face more and more cuts in our personnel, and we're not even, we haven't even started that process yet, we may be going down the path as most municipal governments are of contracting out this service and what we now are only taking a fee. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chair, I only have a few more sure. uh, questions. Self-operation uh, of golf courses. Where, other than our course, was that Harbor? Harbor. Harbor. Where does that, uh, I mean, is any other municipal entity do that? You know, I... I'm I'm a trustee. I'm the only urban parks director and a trustee on the National Recreation and Parks Association. I have not found any successful self-operation across the board. And part of it is because golf has seen a steady decline over the last 10 years. And there's an oversaturation in many areas of golf course operations. City of L.A., I think we have a real competitive advantage. We, we service about 10 million people if you look in in the Southern California. We have some of the premier golf courses. Rancho, and you look at Wilson and Harding, I think we, have, we will have a steady group of people coming in. But does that, when you try to bring in city operations with our tremendous overhead costs, and you know all three of you sat on the city council when my budget, I'm paying $19 million in direct utility charges this year. It becomes very difficult to justify self-operation when you look at 
your direct costs, indirect costs, and your liability. Plus, the city is grappling with this ERIP process in which we will only, as a city, as an entire city, if we lose 3,000 employees to ERIP, only 7% citywide will be allowed to be backfilled. So I have some strong concerns right now as it is it practical for the city to consider self-operation with all the uncertainties we're facing forward. I think going with a, a vendor is the, is the right, the smartest thing to do. I don't think 10 years is, is too long. I think when you look at the complexity and the investment they're going to make, 10 years probably adequate plus a five-year option. I just want to say the process, you, you hired me to come in as general manager to oversee a department. You hired me to come in and make the process pure. This pro every contract we do, I can assure you, is done fairly. I don't have a dog in the fight. I put no external pressure on my people. I tell them to go out. In the case of this contract, I said we are not going to do it in-house. We're going to put all the six criteria together. It's a proposal, not a bid. We're going to go out. We're going to RFP it. We're going to advertise it. Once we get all, collect all the data, and we know that uh, the first phase is, does it meet the maybe we be outreach, et cetera. Once we have competitive proposals, we put this into another co corporation to look at it, and then we, we hired, or we asked five or six people to come to be evaluators. Now, the Mr. process was clean. You know, I was going to ask you that, but, and I've got a variety of questions, but I'm going to cut to the chase. The other questions I can ask you uh, when we get together or maybe as we move forward in trying to come up with a better way to, to run our golf courses, we have the department back in have more time to ask questions. Uh, and I, I do want to say that uh, in the city of Los Angeles, we're fortunate to have a lot of good uh, general managers, but I can't think of one uh, that's better than you are. So, I mean, I, I, I think you're a man of honor and, and a man of integrity, and it's always been a pleasure for me to work with your department. But now let's just cut to the chase. The big the big thing here, the reason why individuals can come and make a very good argument why we shouldn't move forward with this process is because they're saying 50 percent to 39 percent. So lay all of that out. I mean, I don't understand what Mr. Newman said about, well, you know, the, we had three different price ranges and then we, to try to make things even, picked the middle one, which was 50 percent, 39 percent, when he just indicated that they had a a proposal that uh, for an extra five bucks you get the GPS system turned on in your vehicle. I mean, so if if this is real, I mean, you got to let, is this really 39% versus 50%? Because I think we put ourselves in a confusing situation. And the last thing, I, I want some answer on, Mr. Uh, Chair, like I said, I impersonate a golfer. I am not a golfer. Well, usually it's one or two shots that make me come back and spend my 50 bucks the next week out of like hundreds of shots. But um, I cannot believe, and this is not a knock on anybody, that only 25, 24 percent of the carts are rented. I mean, I can't, it, I don't know where that number came from. I go to the course and it looks like and I play primarily two city courses, and I play the county courses. I don't play uh, country clubs unless I'm invited, which is a rarity, because they care about their golf course and don't want people knocking holes and stuff like I <laughs> do, or hitting people, which I have done twice. I'm, I have never got a hole in one, but I've got two golfers, one pretty good. <laughs> so... Um, if you can explain to me the real, this real, you know, how cost and this cart, because I just can't. The, uh, the ad issue is each, each proposal was sealed and is competitively done. When it comes in, we, Ready Golf did have three options that were included in their proposal. We picked the one option that did call for 39% of the gross. So that's the, that's the basis of the evaluation. That, that proposal for the 39% is the one we evaluated against the other two proposers. Kishi did have a 50% gross return on their revenue. 
However, that's only one of six criteria. What we were concerned with, as you know, we've had some bad luck with vendors coming in and having, not having the ability to live up to the terms and conditions of the contract. That's why you have six. We put a lot of weight on the business plan because we felt that would drive the next 10 years. So 50% was one of the evaluation criteria, and, and no, no mistake about it. I, you know, I took a lot of math and a lot of college courses. 50% is always bigger than 39%. But you have to delve down into the other elements, the five elements, to really find out. Re recall, everything in these proposals is their best guess going forward. There's nothing locked in cement. The Greek theater, our contract with the Greek is a little different. They give us a funding floor. They agree that every year they will give us $1.2 million profit. They've always exceeded that. This is all based on a projection of their revenue. Now, uh, Jerry Newman did say 24% of the cards. I have no basis to believe or dis distrust that. I do know as a fact when uh, Mikey Maki came up, I was at that meeting uh, Jim Hahn was the mayor, and we sat down. Kishi came to me and said, we need to bring in new golf carts. I said, bring in the new golf carts. We will figure out a way to make you whole if, in, in fact, you do not get the contract. Now, that was five years ago. So um, um, I do not know in my organization who turned down that deal. My direct thing was get new carts in because we knew the customers were suffering. Um, again, I have... Kishi's been a so, fine. So, so you were aware that they made that offer. And I, to this I day, we it. do not have. I mean, because I, like I said, I love playing at the, 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 the city courses I play at. But, I mean, the golf carts are horrible. And I don't think that anybody would uh, disagree with that. I've. I would have jumped at that opportunity to get new. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's we want to make a profit, but it's about giving customer service, and it's about you know you you want to go and ride in a nice uh, cart. Like for me, I'll pay that five bucks, and this is not saying I support uh, the one, but for me, I'll I like the GPS system because I I try to use the little golf caddies and but I can't do it. I like it just push the button on the card it says you're 115 then I know what club is I'm supposed to use. <laughs> uh, let me just clarify I, I, that. Mr. Muckley, I, I just want to okay. clarify something because I was at that initial meeting with Mike Yamaki and members of Kishi. I thought we had a deal somewhere in my own organization and we fixed this. They turned it down. And that came from my, I do not know why, I do not know when, and I do not know who. Apparently it was done by a phone call. Every vendor I deal with now, I tell them, if you get the wrong answer, you call me. Call me directly. And that way we're going we're gonna to foster a better working relationship because I think we lose the fact that no matter who the vendor is, they're partners in providing us service I, I, to our customers. I I'm sorry, Thank Mr. You. LeBond. Just, we just, covered all? I'm, I'm done. But you I'm, got it. This is a... I don't yeah. know. We may need to talk again All right. about this. Yes. Whatever uh, you want to do. Mr. Reyes. Yeah, I, um, I'm a little frustrated in that. Um, when you look at the weights, it's unclear what's being committed to. I do hear the range of 39 to 60. Yeah, we do have another rate here that's speaking it's higher than 39. So, so what are we actually committing to? Again, that's frustrating to me because I don't know – if we go with the one suggesting the range, what's going to force them to give us the highest return? So on that level, I mean, there's a lot of uh, ambiguity there. Correct. On another level, I see the fact that um, how, do we care, how do we take care of our city employees? What makes sense for our city employees if we're going to be dealing with these cutbacks that you speak of? Um, what program allows us to keep the most number of employees employed? And that, to me, is a very significant question that I have yet to hear an answer to. The, the, I, let me answer that because we've been looking at this for about six months and I've been, I've been really concerned that your, your same concerns. Currently we are in a hiring freeze. I have not brought in on any new employees for about six months. We've gone down Except from... Except part-time lifeguards and camp counselors. Well, the summer summer's a little different, no, but... All right, I but, just want us for the record, keep going. Correct, but I'm talking about full-time employees. Uh, we started the year with 2,053 full-time positions in our budget. 
We're down to 1,800 now. My gut feel is, as we go through this budget process, looking at the numbers, either through the ERIP or other sources, I'm going to be down to 1,400 full-time employees. I'm going to have to re I'm going to have to between now and the end of this fiscal year. So I'm going to have to restructure the department. I can guarantee every single employee who stays, they will be gainfully employed. I'm not looking to I, I would rather go through an ERIP process, take the year and a half when we're going to have total uncertainty. And I guarantee I'm going to lose some great people. But that begs the question, uh, what good are new carts if there's no, there's no employee to have them rent it out? Well, it? You're talking about self-operations, council member, and you're correct. Uh, you're asking me as the general manager, what do I want to take on the uncertainty now of a new function given this fact? No. I think there's too much uncertainty going forward. It's not, uh, what I do agree with, uh, uh, with our union reps, our employees are great. We have the best employees in the city. But I, there's too much uncertainty to take on a new function. And I think what would better serve the city is we, have, uh, uh, we hire somebody to do this work for us under the terms and conditions of a city contract, under the six elements, and then we go forward. Do we keep the employees with a new contract? Yes. The, uh, there's always that service uh, employee retention act that you passed as council members where new, if a new vendor came in they have to keep the employees for a period of time now in terms and of and i will tell you this they have to pay them at the new current living wage and i was very glad to hear from kishi saying that they voluntarily today started to pay their employees living wage so the um this is an old theme, and you've had, I've, you and I have had this conversation several times. How we manage our cash flow? How do we manage that point of interaction when a person pulls out those dollars out of their pocket and goes into the hands of an employee? Who's tracking that money, and how do we know that money's being put where it's supposed to go? There, there's a new change to our process now. When you, if you go to our golf courses, regardless of what happens with this contract, we will now be collecting all the money either by credit card or cash at the starter window. Uh, you're right. Today, if you go to a golf course and Keisha's the operator, you would pay me to start play golf. You would go down to the cart barn and you'd pay them in cash to rent a cart. Uh, it's better accounting for all of us if we collect the money at one central point. I just want to be clear. I'm not making any insinuation about Keisha. I'm talking about just the whole city process in general. This applies in many other functions. So not just Kishi's. I don't want that to be a reflection on Kishi at all. You're asking me. I don't like cash. I don't like cash any time, especially in a time like today when we have financial uncertainty. I would rather to use some electronic funds transfer, a credit card, a debit card. But many of our patrons pay by class. Faith Mock, who's my chief accountant, we have a very aggressive uh, audit process. Well, we do ca in we do surprise cash counts. I'm gonna. I will tell you today. We have caught some very bad apples in this department. In the very areas that concern you and field, uh, you know, our other sports fields, rentals. And I'm going to be coming to you with this report in the next day or two. It's, it's, it's embarrassing in some states, but it just tells if you bring in cash, the temptation is there to do things that we don't want them to do. Just a point of process is about 10 minutes left before council. Um, this body could either say yes or no, correct? Correct. And t how much time do we have to say yes or no? Uh, the, 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 we've got to understand, too, the Recreation and Parks Commission is independent, semi-autonomous from the city council. Their recommendation goes into effect. If we make no decision and council makes no decision, it goes into effect September 4th. September 4th. So we have up to September 4th. Which is council. Okay. So... Any other questions? No, I, 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 a lot of other questions, but running out of time, and you need your time too, Mr. Uh, well, no, the only thing that I, I you know, is a process here, and, and a lot of people, and I, I love history and people who have operated. I've taken notes down here. The thing that disappointed me the most, Mr. Muckery, and Ms. Adams, you had addressed it there, but uh, I always like to notify everybody, and uh, because and everybody knows. But even if, and then someone said they made a phone call, they said it wasn't on the agenda. When, when no one showed up, it makes me feel that they are not care. But still, what's the procedure on that? Is that a well, consistent in a, a city attorney? I know we'll, it's we'll not look, a land we'll, use thing where you don't notify everybody. We'll but, look into that and make uh -huh. the best determination for all those involved. We want to reach out to our...
consumer yeah. base. We want everybody to participate in this. This has been uh, probably the most open, competitive process I've been involved in in 35 years. And but it, but I understand. I understand. Yeah. Times have changed. Right. Some things have changed. Uh, on the on the charter section, you know, uh, 1022 and self operation. The challenges I have there is. We are going to go through bleaker times, and I think the core issues are going to be to maintain the parks for uh, the children uh, of this city. Not that children don't play golf and junior golf, but the parks, the rec centers, the pools, things that people are there to that. And you highly say this was a transparent uh, process. Your commission reviewed it twice recently on that. We've been in front of twice after they had already approved the, the recommended report. Right, and uh, in all due respect to the operator, forty years and the great history and the diversity that was there, you looked at it in all ways there that it was the best for the city to move forward with this recommendation. Yes, committee mem members, we currently have a relationship with both Kishi and Ready Golf, and so for us, we try to make sure that we distance ourselves, uh, Recreation and Parks employees, from the <coughs> process. And as Mr. Muckery stated, that's why we did send it out to an independent panel to do the review, but also, too, for us as city employees, we also had to do our due diligence to review what was presented back to us. But, but and that's that, why we went back and did the further analysis and worked very closely with the city attorney. Well, let me interrupt you for a second there. Um, when you said the categories, why was experience... Why wasn't it rated? Why wasn't it part of the, the it way? Was, it was part of it. And Kishi rated number one in that particular area. But that's what I'm saying. But the overall score on the other areas, they did not. So that's what I'm saying. That They were rated number one in that particular criteria. Um, but what we had tried to do was um, we tried to be very diligent because we're also su seeing that the golf industry, as far as the number of annual rounds, they are decreasing. And so we tried to do our analysis to go back and to see um, also with another consultant what was their economic forecast for growth um, in the next few years, especially up the next 10 years for this contract. And that's why we went back and we did our analysis. Even after we had received the um, recommendation from the independent panel members, we went back and did our further analysis to see where we thought would be prudent for us to think where we, th these vendors could be in the future. And so that's why we also moved forward with the recommendation to the board. Yes, it was 50% versus 39%, but that wasn't the only criteria. And we were also, too, as Mr. Muckery has stated, we've had experience in the past where vendors have not been able to lend up to what they have presented. Our economic forecaster presented that they thought it would be about at least a 2.5% uh, economic growth each fiscal year. Uh, Kishi's proposal jumped way up, way before that. And also, too, uh, Ready Golf's proposal was a little more even keel. So that's why we took a lot of things into consideration when we put together this report to present to our Mr. board. Mr. Chair, just yes. well, maybe then you can give more of a direct answer. So what, what happens, I, I explain what happens with this 61%. I want to know what's, what is real and what is not real. If we have we to vote on this now, I mean, so w let's say what you want to do, we say, okay, do it. What, what's, how much money are we going to get? We did not take the 61% proposal into our calculations because, as we stated, we are also, too, over the last few years, for a department, as a department, as a city, we have been increasing the golf fees for the golfers. And so we were looking at, also, at with the decrease in the golf rounds, uh, how much we were already charging golfers, and also, too, what the additional cost would be for them for the new golf carts. So we were trying to be very prudent so that we wouldn't price ourselves out of the market because we also, too, have to be very aware of our competitors out there. So those were the things we took into account. We did not take the 61% into it because we would get um, there would be additional cost to the golfers. So we were also I mean, trying to. This is the only thing, like I said, we got we have we've got a deadline of Friday, okay? But I, are you a golfer? No. And see, I would debate. I mean, how could you just discount? And I'm not doing this supporting Ready Golf. How could you not? But just put the dog on option on the table. Why don't you let the golfers decide? It is. It, so it was the answer I'm trying to get. Okay, so and what, it was there. What in the event that we vote for this, it's not 50 percent per se versus 39 percent, or is it? No, 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 it is. So that then, is, so I don't understand. See, this is why. Uh, the, it's very simple. If you look at Ready Golf, gave us three three options within their proposal. So can we take any one of them? No, options? it's not no. a negotiation. So which option we take? We, we take took the, the 39. 39. That's what I'm saying. That's so the six, seven, 61 percent is just gone. Yes. It's not even part of the okay. evaluation. Uh, members, what we have before us is to uh, support the committee, uh, the commission. 
or reject the commission it did right now. That's right, Ms. Madam Clerk? But I like to start with the clerk first, and then I go to the city attorney and make sure it's right. <laughs> Madam City Attorney. All right. What's before you is mm -hmm. to make a recommendation to either approve um, the awarding of the concession agreement to um, Ready Golf or to disapprove um, with the recommendation that it go back to the Board of Regional right. Park Commissioners. Right. I think it's absolutely imperative that we move forward if the department's general manager said this is transparent. Uh, Ms. Adams, you were with the CAO's office before. I know you're not a golfer, but you're the CAO's office. You've always had the city's best interest. You're now assistant general manager, the number one person in the number two role at Recreation and Parks. You support that. Our CAO analysis supports that. Okay. I, I, I like all people, okay, but when they come with me at this front here, it's very important to go forward at this time because I don't believe we're going to be able to turn it around with self-operation because there's other pressing issues on this. Members, how do you feel? And if you both feel silent, then we could go forward to council with no recommendation uh, and then the council what, what could hear it My, my, my silence is a right. reflection of this 39%. It makes no sense to me to get involved with a deal that's going to give the city less revenue. That doesn't make sense. If we're stuck with 39%, if we're going by what's in front of us as a contract, that means we're going to get less over 10 years. Is that right? You're going to, you're going to get a less percentage of whatever gross uh, is generated, and that's why the business plan also played a role in the, in the determination. So does the business plan mean we're going to get more than that? It, it's all raw dollars at the end, not a percentage of gross. And the independent evaluators felt that Ready Golf's uh, business plan, with all the other factors of golf revenues going down, the growth rate, probably would generate more revenue and also took into account some of the uh, Im improvements. That so were over time, the 39% in. in real dollars actually will generate more money than the 50% because of the way the business plan that has was, been that, that's the independent presented. Evaluator. That's correct. And that's what everyone has evaluated. And that's what I'm saying. This is all proposals are project your best guess projections going forward. Who, Mr. Chair, who gets, who gets us new golf carts the soonest? Everybody. Wait, wait. I'm well, ask, the, the ask the general manager, please. I have uh, both, both parties have told me that they can come. In fact, Keisha is ready to bring in new golf carts. Well, I think. You said one year old, but if we get the proposal, if it goes yeah. back. See, I know, but here's the problem. Here's the, the problem. The idea was they're willing to, if, if, if in fact we're not successful going forward, Keisha has made a commitment that they would replace their fleet. So, and Ready Golf is what's their commitment? They're ready to move right now. So as soon as as soon as uh, we we award a contract, or they they will get a period of time to bring in their team and their staff. And I'm not sure when when is the exact date. If this is not approved um, by council by this Friday, September 4th, then that would mean for our, our board we would go take this back, and Kishi would continue on a month to month contract. But if and this our, is not approved by the board, if this is not approved which means that we would also, um, the, our department and board would have to decide whether or not they would like for us to reissue the RFP, which would take at least another year, or if, uh, as far as for us to self-operate, one of the things Mr. Mercury did not include is that in this, ec this economic time, we would also have to uh, try to come up with startup costs for us to self-operate in addition to the staff, which we at this point know that that's going to be a big issue, and the liability that our department would take on. The, the contract, a normal contract be, if, if we went with Ready Golf, our recommendation, they get 60 to 90 days from, from the time of award to be ready to go. But if this was awarded, let's say, on the, on the 5th, executed in, by the 1st of the year, that would mean there would be new carts in the 1st of the year? Yes. Okay, and anticipated that. Members, I'm just saying the frustration that I've heard from people, and it's been a long process of many, many years, uh, whatever the challenges are, I'm not happy with how we process this in recreation and parks, but Mr. Muckery made a good point of how he has these challenges. I say if we want to serve the public now, they went through a transparent process, they go forward with this recommendation that was reviewed by the commission, and that's what we should recommend to the council. Now, to go forward from here, someone has to second that, and if someone doesn't want to second it. Mr. Uh, Chair, mm -hmm. out of respect for you and based on the importance of this discussion, mm -hmm. I will second that. 
Mm-hmm. I am not saying that come Friday mm-hmm. because there are more questions that I need to ask, and I want to talk to somebody in the department to see can adjustments be made uh, after the contract is awarded that would keep the 61 percent option alive because the main argument here is that uh, the, the the 50 39 even though the department says over years so anyway I will support your motion is what I'm saying okay uh, excuse me um, if I may uh, yes commissioners um, council members, council members. Um, just to correct two things one I think uh, Ms. Adams when she was stating she made a misstatement she said what the contract was um, disapproved if it was if this if this item were disapproved by council on Friday, which would be for us to reject with, it. reject with uh, yep for us to contract with Ready Golf. Um, I think the question that um, Councilmember Wesson had asked is what happens if this is approved? How soon could um, either of the vendors provide the golf carts? Kishi is no. ready to go right now. Ready to golf will have 60 days to 90 days to burn in. But the council member's question was not that. Yeah. The council member said, can we reopen negotiations, at, reopen a proposal with Ready Golf to go to the 61%? And the answer is no. I bet you Ready Golf would gladly. I'm sure they would. But anyway, I'll talk, like I said, I'm going to just for now. Okay. For now, and I will support that. For the record, Mr. Chair, for yeah. the record, I'm going to. I'm, I'm, until I understand and and look at how this 39 percent and the business plan equates to in your minds more revenue for the city than the 50 percent that to me I need to understand much better right now it's, it's not clear to me and I'd rather abstain at this time I'll make my decision on Friday right. but that's an, for me that's a very very important factor we agree. and uh, right now on print it doesn't feel right until I understand how that business plan converts to more cash for this city over 10 years, when up front we're being told by Keisha they'll do 50%, which is more, it just doesn't make sense. All right, thank you very much. So there's abstention, and then uh, Mr. Wesson and I will move it forward. Perfect. I also, Curtis. with a, Curtis. okay, but also, Mr. McCree, I'm concerned about what the first speaker said, how she made a call to your office, and no one knew. I want to look at the record, Madam Clerk, on the 15th. Of anybody there, was there an attorney representing Kishi at that meeting at all? Or whatever, so I want to look at the record for that. We'll look at our program. Uh, this will be heard on City Council on Friday. On Friday, they do have a variety of programs before Council, so check with the City Clerk's Office. What's your telephone number, Erica? 978-1071. Okay, please call so you can appropriate your time and come to the meeting, and uh, we'll go for there. We'll have a, uh, this meeting's adjourned forward to Council. <laughs>